morning everyone this is an unusual mothering sunday isn't it you're meant to be going to your mum's for roast lamb or i don't know nut roast or whatever and instead you're stuck at home never mind you know god is good the uh, the, the the premise of mothering sunday is that you would be allowed to go back to your mother church now that's not going to happen today but your mother church can come to you so here we are great to see you uh, we are going to be thinking about um uh, being stuck over these next few weeks because essentially we are stuck some of you are stuck in work you're at the sharp end of the coronavirus you are uh, uh, you know medical staff or nursing staff or you're you know maybe collecting the rubbish or whatever but you have to be in work you're kind of a bit stuck there other of us are thinking about just the, the fear of being stuck we we don't know where our um, who's going to pay our wages or just being stuck with the kids trying to do a job online and also look after our children at the same time. I get it, we actually are all in the same boat in one way or another. So what does God say? What does God say to us uh, when we're stuck? That's what we're gonna unpack. We're gonna be thinking about some of the Old Testament stories uh, of, of the people of Israel being stuck. Uh, Rob uh, and the youth team are doing a similar theme. Uh, well, it's their theme, I've just pinched it. Uh, looking at how uh, the scripture speaks to young people and Katie and the kids team are doing the same. So we are kind of got a theme together as a church on being stuck. So this morning we're going to read from Exodus 17 and looking at how the people of Israel were stuck in the desert, stuck between a rock and a foreign army and how we react when we are stuck in those places. Let's read together uh, Exodus 17. The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of Sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at, camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses replied, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there and they grumbled against Moses. They said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, what am I to do with these people? They're almost ready to storm me. The Lord answered Moses, go out in front of the people, take with you some of the elders of Israel and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will stand there before you by the rock at Horeb, strike the rock and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and because they tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with a staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered them, and Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning, but whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side, one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this on a scroll as something to be remembered, and make sure that Joshua hears it, because I will completely blot out the name of Amalek from under heaven. Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner. He said, Because hands were lifted up against the throne of the Lord, the Lord will be at war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. There's a load of stuff in that passage. But we're just going to open up uh, the word and just think a, a little bit about this enemy, this Amalekite uh, uh, enemy. Uh, the, the interesting thing here is it's all about war. And we've heard that from uh, global leaders, haven't we? That this virus is like a war. The French president said it, the American president has said it, and some other interesting things as well. So we are, we are at war. And there's a biblical idea of war. You know, we talk about putting on the full uh, armour of God. Uh, that, that comes all the way through the New Testament as much as it is in the Old. And here we are in this strange situation where we're thinking about spiritual things, and physical things, how the physical, being stuck at home, the, the virus, all that stuff affects your spiritual life and how your spiritual life in these days ahead can really affect your physical life because we are all in unknown territory, just as Moses and Joshua and the people of Israel were. The first thing we need to grab hold of about the Amalekites uh, is that they will keep you stuck. They will keep you, 
that's the wrong slide. <laughs> but that's just like a normal Sunday morning, so I'll keep going. The Amalekites, they are against God. That was the one. I knew what I'm talking about. They're against God uh, because they are godless. Interestingly, Hebrews 12 verse 6 talks about Esau. So Esau is the father of the Amalekites. Remember your Old Testament stories. You've got Rebecca and Isaac. They have Jacob and Esau. Terrible twins, they really are. And Esau is described in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 12, 16, that he was godless. So there is this idea that the godless are against the godly uh, in this situation, in this story. That's certainly true. You've got Israel, Israel seen as the godly and uh, the Amalekites seen as uh, the godless. Well, we need to be reminded of that in this time of challenge because we are a people of hope. We are the godly people. And so don't fall for the, 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 the idea of fear and just that whole that whole thing that's going on on social media and in the news where it's just, it is really is project fear. If you get Brexit, we, we have forgotten Brexit, haven't we? This is much more important. We need to be people of hope. One of the things that we learn in scripture is that the Lord removes himself when, when the people remove themselves from him. So we need to be keeping our eyes focused uh, on God uh, the Amalekites, they are against God. Let's see if this one's right. Hey, look at that. Uh, yeah. They will keep you stuck. They will keep you stuck. They came and attacked Israel, verse 8 says. That's really interesting to see that because it's not Israel who are the aggressors here, but they are taking land. They are taking land. They are moving towards the promised land. They are moving towards God's promises for them. And as you kind of think, you know what, I'm not going to get down by this uh, forced internment. I'm not going to get be brought down by being stuck at home. I'm going to engage with God. As you do that, don't be surprised if you face a little bit of opposition because the Amalekites want to keep you stuck and they will rob you uh, of your inheritance. You are a son of the king. You are a daughter of the king. You have an inheritance uh, in Jesus as a follower of him and you need to keep hold of that. The Amalekites want to rob you uh, of your inheritance. In Numbers 13, uh, we read about the spies uh, who go out. And the spies go out and, and they're looking at the promised land. And they see all these big kids and they go, we can't go there. It's too terrifying, even though it was their inheritance. Guess who some of those big kids were? That's right. They were the Amalekites. We, we have a promised Galatians 3.29. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. What's your inheritance this morning? It may be just a simple idea of peace in a, in a time of turmoil. Lord, give me your peace right now. It might be, might be joy because we're, we're facing in the weeks to come a lack of joy. We can re-engage with the inheritance of Christ. The Amalekites will rob you of inheritance and they will steal, they'll steal what you already have. We, we just need to be so aware that we are under attack right now. Interestingly, in Judges, Judges chapter 3, so a couple of generations after this, uh, this encounter with them, Gideon is fighting those peoples, the Midianites who come across the land. And guess what? Some of those um, some of those people, some of those invading armies, guess where they come from? They are Amalekites. They want to steal what God has done. Uh, the Lord is saying to you today, don't don't let what God has done in your life be stolen from just with fear and anxiety. I, I know the fear and anxiety is real. You might have lost your job. The finances might be really challenging right now. Hold on to him. Don't Don't step out. Step in to what he's got for you. The Amalekites, uh, they want to steal what you've got and they will lead you to compromise. They will lead you to compromise. You know, the, the Israelites, they, they find themselves in this place over and over and over again. They compromise their faith in Jesus. Well, not Jesus. This is Old Testament. They compromise their faith in Yahweh, don't they? They, they allow other gods and other ideas in. We've seen that as we've studied Hosea. Here we have it happening again and again and again. And the Amalekites are always seem to be there. In 1 Kings uh, 15, God gives Saul the job. Finish off those Amalekites, will you? They are dangerous to my people. And he doesn't do it. He takes off. He takes some of the swag. He lets the Amalekite king go. Uh, and we have this compromised idea. Don't compromise your faith. Don't compromise who God has called you to be. 
the Amalekites, they will lead you to compromise. And they seek your destruction. The enemy seeks your destruction. It's a very um, brilliant story in Esther 3. You know, you, I'm sure you've read it. You've got some bit of time. You can read it later. But in Esther 3, uh, the, the, the baddie, Haman the Agite, he wants to wipe out all of the Jewish people off the face of the earth. We've heard that one before, haven't we? How the people of God are under attack. Guess what? Haman the Agite, he's an Amalekite. Are you getting the theme? We see the same enemy bringing the same stuff over and over again. But this is what you need to remember this morning, that the battle belongs to the Lord. The battle belongs to the Lord. Exodus tells us nothing about the battle. All it tells us is that sometimes Israel's winning and sometimes the Amalekites are winning. But when Israel's winning, it's because Moses' hands are raised and Aaron and her are there with him, raising his hands, saying, God is for you. His banner is over you. I think that's the job of all of us in these days to come, that we are pushing each other on. Hebrews says we should push each other on towards love and good deeds. That is what we are called to uh, right here, that we push each other on towards love and good deeds we can see an amazing thing happen in these days of isolation because we can be the church not the church gathered in a building but the church scattered being the hope of the world so church keep going there we are in a battle we are in a battle but the battle belongs to the lord let's pray together shall we lord thank you for your presence with us today thank you that you never leave us or forsake us pray you'd go before us and lord if we feel stuck i pray that you would unstick us in jesus mighty name amen we will uh, see you next week in the week stay well praying for you may the lord bless you and keep you may his face shine upon you and give you hope